Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hi, everybody. How's it going? <laughs> All right. Welcome to Airme. For everyone who's new, I know our Kernel fellows will be very, very familiar with this, but it's probably a new software for, for many of our guests. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to what will be the majority of the show today, which is demos from the great, great projects of Apollo. Um, but the reason that we're in AirMeet is so that for the last 45 minutes or so of the time that we have here, if you do want to talk to any one of these projects after the, the, the presentations, you'll be able to do so uh, in the tables that you may have noticed as we were waiting for us to kick off. Um, so you'll just be able to hop in, say, say something to one of the projects if you'd like to, um, and, and hop around if you'd like to talk to them. So we'll probably keep it relatively structured. We'll get into that in a second. Um, but I'm just going to do a brief introduction of myself and then and the program and then kick it off from there. Um, so we're here today for Apollo Demo Day. Um, but it's worth, I think, talking for just a second about the fellowship itself for a second. Um, and the fellowship for Apollo is kind of born out of the idea that if we could build a give first community of highly talented individuals interested in building in the Filecoin ecosystem, whether that's miners, whether that's infrastructure developers, entrepreneurs, um, and you put those people will hop in right here. Um, if uh, one, if you have anything to say now or at any point, uh, of course, you know, we're really lucky to have Juan Benet um, here with us today. We have Colin Everin from the team and I see in the chat we have some great uh, mentors that have been a part of the program the whole time. We have Brett Shear from Fleek, uh, Andrew Hill, um, I know Mike, Hey guys, uh, thanks for the welcoming speech, Vivek. And uh, I so the presentations will be three minutes short. And uh, I would like to give mic to Nas, who is from WFIL, and Nas. Okay. All right, Nazarena, just so you know, you're muted but we do see your screen. Oh. Perfect. Hi, I'm uh, Nazareno, co-founder of Wrapped Filecoin, the first Filecoin stablecoin on Ethereum. The problem we are addressing is bridging Filecoin and Ethereum. Currently, there is no way for Filecoin holders, storage miners, or storage clients to uh, add, uh, access liquidity or exchange Filecoin on Ethereum via DeFi services. Uh, we propose Wrapped Filecoin, a stablecoin baked by Filecoin deposits on a custodial wallet to be used on Ethereum on lending platform 
like MakerDAO as collateral to get DAI or have a compound to get liquidity that can be used to earn interest or uh, provide or be provided to liquidity pools on Uniswap uh, or Balancer and so on. The technology uh, we are using includes uh, Open Zeppelin for the ERC20 token, a Filecoin wallet that we built to test it up and we are currently developing, Lotus uh, to interact with Filecoin network, Textile 3 b to keep track of wrapping and wrapping transaction, AWS Lambda to automatically wrap and wrap, um, wrap Filecoin, and also the interface has been deployed on IPFS via Flick. The market we are addressing is Filecoin that launched uh, last week on mainnet uh, and has uh, a diluted market cap of 60 billion and a current market cap of $500 million that we want to bring to uh, Ethereum and sp uh, aiming to lock uh, more than $100 million on DeFi and uh, growing exponentially uh, the next years. As a business model, we propose wrapping fee, 0.5% on wrapping and unwrapping transactions. Uh, the project was born during uh, AKFS, where we released the first prototype. Then we migrated to Space Race Filecoin testnet during Apollo, and we are currently migrating to Space Race 2, and Filecoin just launched on mainnet. Uh, next step will include uh, release the MVP and fully audit the code base, including formal verification, and launch on mainnet as soon as possible. After that, uh, uh, we want to release a new custodial version to fully decentralize prop Filecoin by leveraging on Filecoin smart contracts. And after that, explore uh, opportunities for DeFi application on Filecoin. The team is formed by me and Christian, and we are taking care of uh, the code as well. Uh, thanks. Thanks a lot, Naz. Uh, next is James. Yes, sir. Give me one second. Just pulling this up. Sure. All right. So uh, my name is James and our name is Guare. So we are working to redefine data custody for Web3, right? The web has evolved to provide incredible functionality and convenience, which makes our digital footprint more important than ever. But we don't like how our data is being collected and used, and we don't have a practical solution today. We know, also know that Web3 needs to be tangibly improve our experience, right? That privacy isn't motivation enough. So as technologists and builders, how do we empower users to manage their data without centralizing it? How do we secure that data? So we've built a protocol which facilitates the universal, interoperable, and secure exchange of data without requiring custody of that data. Right? Decentralization is changing how the web works. So instead of private centralized remote storage, users can now store their data on decentralized networks like Filecoin and manage access to that data via blockchains like Ethereum. So this is what we're building. One protocol to provide this utility for the transport layer of this new network stack centered on two core microservices. First, we have on-chain access management, which provides developers the primitives, the tools that they need to universally manage access to data, while ensuring end users still maintain control over that access. Uh, Ethereum also enables the protocol to perform some core functions like identity verification. Decentralized encryption services provide smart contracts the means to enforce those policies. Trusted execution environments like Intel SGX allow for trustless, remote, and verifiably private key generation. And this replaces protocols like TLS and centralized encryption services for all types of secured communication. As a protocol, we're network agnostic. As open source, we aim to encourage adoption, innovation, interoperability, right? Users can manage their data within applications or independently using an open source client or the command line. So defining this protocol is what makes a framework like this possible, where end users have actual control over their data and participation is not predicated on trust. This isn't hoping your right to be forgotten is respected. This is directly exercising your digital rights. So for Apollo, we took a free and open source Web2 drawing application and used our protocol to adapt it for Web3. 
Any files created within this application are stored on Filecoin and access is managed via Ethereum and secured using our protocol. Uh, maintaining backwards compatibility and migrating Web2 to a decentralized architecture is important. And so the protocol is easily integrated into existing Web2 applications and is compatible with existing libraries like OpenSSL. So we're passionate about what we're building. We know this privacy, the security, and this control are important. So we're fundraising to help make this a reality, to properly audit the protocol, and to build a team to continue the development of it. Uh, so if owning your digital footprint is important to you, please come by our table to chat. We have a video of our demo, as well as more information on how our protocol works and how we intend to sustain Guare as a business. Thank you very much. Awesome, James. Really cute product demo. Next is Kevin, if you're ready. All right, can you hear me and see me? Yep. Cool. All right, I'm Graven, one of the co-founders of the GeoWeb. Uh, my co-founder, Cody Hatfield, is on the call as well. Um, we're going through a paradigm shift for what it means to be on the internet. Every time we check our smartphone or smartwatch, we barely even think about the fact that we're using the internet. In the next couple of years, we'll see the launch of mainstream smart glasses. We believe this will be an inflection point like the launch of the iPhone was. The smart glasses, the internet is always on and in our field of view. So our world can end up looking something like this, a blend of physical and digital creating our lived reality. How this future will be structured, experienced and governed is still up in the air. Um, you can guess which model we want to bend the future towards. So the GeoWeb is our vision for a Web3 network for this future. It's like an AR metaverse that we all live in and navigate just like the, the physical world. On the GeoWeb, any digital content can be anchored and seamlessly experienced side by side uh, with the real world in a universal browser. Our digital land registry creates the shared reality of the GeoWeb. Control of the land parcel in the registry means that you determine what digital content is anchored to that real world location. The registry is a narrow waste protocol and it integrates with other leading Web3 infrastructure. Our digital land registry only works if everyone agrees upon its authority. So we're implementing it with mechanism design that harnesses self-interest to create network effects from publishers, users, and builders. We think that takes two parts. The first is our Salsa Land Administration Smart Contract. This market structure, also known as Harburger Texas, eliminates monopoly power over digital land parcels. It punishes pure speculation and squatting through network fees and a continuous auction mechanism. The second piece is a user-centric browsing experience. We can put the user at the center of the GeoWeb by identifying characteristics of potential bad behavior and giving them effective tools and information to punish publishers accordingly. Since the start of a we've come a long way in the scalability of our network administration and the storage efficiency of our land representation on the EVM. Once we're live with an MVP, we'll start populating the network with new experiences and building partnerships to create initial traction. We'll always be looking to recruit builders on the GeoWeb, so if you're interested, definitely reach out to us, stop by our table. And finally, we're looking for funding to work on this project full-time. We're attempting to do this right and build for the long-term public good. Your support via Gitcoin grant or investment will go a long way to pro propel us down that path. Thank you, here's some of our information, but also just stop by our table, we'd love to chat. Thanks a lot, thanks a lot. Uh, Kit, you're next. Hello. Hi, I'm Kit Blake, one of a team of two developing Climate Data Pool. Our use case deals with climate data from the Paris Climate Accord. Every country is responsible for submitting reports on a scheduled basis. The files are hosted by the United Nations. The problem is, the current storage is classically centralized, while the data is non-standard, duplication-prone, and not traceable. Our solution is, store the files on IPFS using Filecoin. This will ensure a canonical version of the assets with no duplication. The decentralized storage will be implemented using an app derived from Fleek Hosting, 
while the file metadata will be stored with textile buckets. Data provenance will be verifiable. This is our We wrote user stories for the project. One is about Sam, a civil servant in Singapore, and the other is Riley, a climate researcher who could be based anywhere. When Sam logs in, he lands on the overview screen of his country's document storage. You can see it looks a lot like fleet hosting, but it's been branded. FUI into a document management application. In storage jobs, each country has its own bucket, so every country has its own climate data pool. Sam needs to upload a report, so he goes to the upload screen. He selects a fills in some metadata, clicks upload, and enters. Now we switch roles to Rowley the researcher. She's searching. She finds the file we just uploaded. She clicks download. It loads. She's done. And we're done with the demo. Next steps. We need to work out what the real benefits of our solution are, as opposed to the current storage. And we need to determine the scope of the document management. Simultaneously, we want to build a working prototype. This is the team. I'm a manager type, and Abby's a data guy. In August, we had a back-end dev on board, but he unfortunately had to bail, so we continued on our own. Here's some history. We started in an IT challenge at the UN in 2017. Those were early days. We were using IPFS on the command line. In 2018, I visited someone from the UN, and this year we're participating in the vibrant IPFS Filecoin ecosystem. Our needs. We're looking for climate action collaborators, both individuals and organizations. We are a labor of love entity that needs funding. And we're looking for full stack developers that want to contribute. You'll find full information at our blog. Thank you for your time. Thanks a lot, Ged. Thanks a lot. Uh, Alex, you're next. Share my screen. Let's see. All right, can everyone see this? Yep. Loading. Awesome. I'm Alessandro Voto, and I'm co founder of Decompute along with my partners, and Mal and Julian. So, when I was looking at folding at home and the rest of the computing. Uh, toolkits that were built on Boink, which is a distributed computing infrastructure, I thought it was just absolutely incredible. Just with Folding at Home, over 233 research papers were developed with thousands of co-authors who helped make uh, this protein folding uh, problem easier to solve. And just by distributing it to the PlayStation 3 alongside a whole host of other computers and servers, we got 100 million hours just out of those, those, uh, those gaming consoles with 15 million people participating over five years. And that is truly incredible. And if you look at today, enterprises, startups, everyone's running siloed data and intelligence stacks. Um, it's very, very difficult to create collective intelligence, invite participation from other people with excess capacity, not only for storage, but computing to help solve the world's greatest challenges quicker. Um, so we want to help beat this kind of centralized computing lock-in and open up the possibility for dApps to do more than they do today, uh, where they're limited by things like Ethereum's through cost. And this is a huge market. It's three three billion dollars estimated by 2025, according to Industry Arc. So how are we going to unleash this crowd intelligence? Uh, Decompute is one way to do that, and we want to help bridge distributed computing and storage. Today, we're doing that by combining the power of Filecoin to store massive volumes of data and Golem to actually enable computing throughput and distributing tasks to a set of worker nodes. So today, uh, we're already pulling files from textile buckets and pushing them through Blender to help render animations very, very quickly across a set of distributed nodes. This works today. Um, and we want to create a whole DevOps toolkit for allowing other people to do this just like we do, in addition to creating a bunch of sample apps like an If This Then That uh, and kind of Kaggle computing environment. So we think this is going to be more affordable, more scalable, decentralized and collaborative when compared to things like Amazon or Google Cloud. The use cases are huge. Almost every bit of developer, developer infrastructure can be changed 
but we are particularly interested in medical research, finance, and business, cases where people need massive computing, and they also need guarantees of privacy and uh, huge collective data sets. We also want to make this really, really easy for enterprise developers. We don't want to disrupt people's flows and have them migrate and figure out a whole host of new uh, uh, coding languages and, and wallet technology. So we want to integrate with uh, frameworks like serverless and uh, other Amazon Lambda workflows. We want to work with Jupyter, which is where a lot of data scientists already are putting their projects and allowing people to interact with them. And we want to make it really, really easy to drop any Docker container in and have it work with a bound Orbit DB uh, volume. So we also want to turn this into a marketplace where people can share their data and algorithms together and help solve these huge problems. So we have a team, as I mentioned, and Mall is doing software engineering, Julian's on operations, and I'm product managing. And you can check out our Gitcoin grant here. Uh, investors, please get in touch. We are probably a very, very early pre-seed, but we would love your introductions to experts and potentially new ways to fund this. Um, so thank you. Join us for Decompute. Awesome project, awesome team, awesome market. Thanks a lot, Alex. Uh, next is Sachendra from NetSafio. Uh, hi, Sachin. Uh, can you hear me and uh, see the deck? I, I can see the deck now. Yep. All right. So uh, hello, everyone. Um, myself, Sachin, and I'm very excited to present your project, NetCPO, which aims to be an all-in-one solution for your safe internet browsing experience. So cybersecurity has been a long-standing global issue has affected millions of business and people, especially in healthcare, education, and e-commerce. The rise of hate speech and racism that flows through the social media has invoked fear among people and resulted in mob violence. And it is these things which are kind of a very much a threat to the democracy and how we grow as a society and a, and a progressive community. So to counter this challenge, we have created NetCPO, which basically uh, provides a safe internet browsing experience by using uh, by giving users insights on the website that they browse and allows them to categorize into safe or unsafe content. So our uh, we use blockchain-based smart contracts to store ratings uh, for each website and all of the metadata about rating and, and reviews, uh, uh, all, of the, all of the screenshots are going to be going into the IPFS. This enables making the information available for further analysis without any bottlenecks. Also, watch your bot, which basically checks whether a vote is genuine or not, and scrapes the content of the website for the particular vote, archiving it to the IPFS and Filecoin network, creating a snapshot for hot and cold storage. So this is this is how our uh, extension looks. We are also we have also integrated our email. Uh, based authentication whereas uh, the, and the web3 will be automatically loaded so we are also thinking of users who are not very much in uh, knowledge of web3 or, or about all wallet uh, wallet integration so there will be like a linking between the uh, email address and, uh, and and the wallet address and and that's how the voting is going to happen um, so when we talk of market, so it has a lot of, uh, but there are a lot of apps already existing and all of these data uh, is kind of in silo and it's not very much open so that you will not be able to understand whether this particular website, whether if you're using a VPN or you're using a firewall, you'll not know which one to block and which one to allow. So we are basically standing apart through the use of blockchain and data democratization models, making it easier to stop cyber attacks. So any company and any individual can access this data. Research suggests that the, uh, and, and that the particular demand is gonna grow by, by, by usage of more, uh, more advanced cybersecurity solutions. So the impact we, uh, is what we are catering for is we aim to bring accountability to the domain of website owners, to watch for harmful content and enable a safe browsing experience. We currently will offer our solution as a gift to this growing community, which will be driven by consensus and tokenomics. So uh, currently we have completed the voting and web archive functionality and we also have aimed to uh, integrate VPN and uh, anonymous browsing support with firewall and stuff. Uh, that's our roadmap where we are also planning to understand how what kind of trackers and reading about privacy policies to give a user an understanding of what kind of data is being collected while the website they're viewing. And this is the feedback we got uh, while we participated in some hackathons. We won one of the hackathons in India, Incubate, and, and we, we have been going on a good journey since then. And yeah, this is the team where we have experience in backend development, front-end development. This is the first time we are building browser ex browser extensions, so we would love for any feedback from you guys as well. Um, yeah, so Thanks that's, much, that's much more. Thank you very much. Uh, next is Peter from Deep Platformer.
Are you able to see my screen? Uh, no, yes. You're seeing it now? Yep. Great. So I'm Peter Van Garden from the Deplatformer Project. Uh, the problem we're addressing is the loss of online privacy, the sale of internet activity information to advertisers, and the lock-in of personally curated content in walled gardens. Our target market is people who have become fed up with social media platforms, sometimes referred to as the delete Facebook movement. We're working on tools to help you move your data from platforms like Facebook and Google Photos to Web3 networks like Filecoin Storage. The Platformer team had its start in this summer's HackFS event. Our Pygate project was one of the 10 finalists. Pygate is the Python gRPC client and reference application for Textile's PowerGate API to the Filecoin network. We continue to maintain and update the Pygate interface and decided to build Dplatformer using the Pygate tools for the Apollo event. Dplatformer is a tool that helps you liberate your data from centralized platforms and walled gardens like Facebook, Instagram, Google Photos, iCloud, etc., without losing the core features that drew you to them in the first place. This includes employing cutting edge AI technology for features like face recognition and image classification. But in our scenario, you own your machine learning models. They are not being employed by a soulless corporation to mine your personal information on behalf of advertisers. Instead, this data is encrypted along with all your other content and metadata. And you control the private keys to unlock this content when you want to use it or share it. Starting with Filecoin storage, we envision the entire technical stack running on decentralized networks to guarantee privacy and personal control. So as per Apollo coaching, we built a minimal viable prototype to get user feedback as quickly as possible. We limited scope to Facebook content and Filecoin storage. Our prototype imports the zip file that is made available via the Facebook export function. It now includes your post metadata in JSON format, which makes it more meaningful to parse. The platformer recreates all your photos and video albums with your content descriptions and makes all your posts available via a reverse engineered your memory feature. We will add an option to push these as daily email or SMS posts. And all your Facebook photo, video, and metadata files are backed up to Filecoin, including the SQLite file, which is generated from your parsed JSON metadata. We formatted a set of stock content for our testers to upload and then walk through the application. We use an interview template and recorded the sessions to capture comments while users interacted with the application. We got some positive initial feedback along with useful critiques and tips for our UI. We got a sense of people's usage patterns. We got some detailed insights on what they value in Facebook and what they would want from an alternative. And we got some tough questions to ponder. It has become clear that a static dump of content from platform sites won't be enough. We need to find a Web3 way to share personal content with trusted contacts in an interactive way, but without building yet another Web2 walled garden. So we've got some major next steps on the roadmap, including identifying the actual Web3 social sharing strategy, adding support for other platforms like Instagram and iCloud Photos, enabling zero knowledge encryption, allowing the users to manage those private keys, moving all our processing to the centralized Web3, moving our hosting to decentralized Web3, and enabling private machine learning models for your own data collections. If you share our vision and would like to help us move ahead on our roadmap, please donate to our Gitcoin grant or contact us about seed funding to help us accelerate the development of this exciting new alternative to the status quo. Please follow our newsletter on Substack to stay up to date on project developments. Thank you. I really liked seeing the name of D compute there as one of the integrations, which is <laughs> apparently one of the Apollo fellow. So yeah, I've been following them. We've been uh, throughout Apollo. We've been talking and discussing because obviously we have overlapping interests. So I'm yeah, very excited fun. about their project. That's amazing. Thanks a lot, Peter. Next is I use from Cadbury. Hi, everyone. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Hi. So we are Cadbury Meets, and we are video meetings reimagined for performance, affordability, and security using blockchain and Web3 tech. It's not that there are video conferencing solutions not available in the market, but there are a lot of problems with that. There is a low streaming quality and latency. There is a high round trip time, which is even worse in countries which are lesser developed. 
the pricing is very very high storage it's very high storage pricing and currently only 7% of the data generated overall gets stored just in terms of numbers currently zoom ha- has 120 dollars per year per license for storing only 10 gbs of data if you need to store more data you need to have additional package taken which is uneconomical for many of the uh, users who use it thirdly is it's not industry specific the solution is very very generic in nature followed by meeting security and privacy presenting cadbury meets we have high streaming quality very low round trip time we are economical we use filecoin and filecoin currently it's almost 15x cheaper than amazon s3 it's catered to specific industry use case these are our product snapshots so you can see that it's a, it's a one click start no sign up required no login required very smooth process so, so that a user has very lesser learning curve this is how the inside meet looks like so we have it's almost similar to how google meet looks this is again to make it's a very very uh, lesser learning curve we have superior video quality with privacy storage and file coin as you can see you can record the data here you can store the data we have used textile power gate for that and right now we have 1.5 gb of data stored on slingshot using these recordings which we are very proud of now the market we are specifically going after the market which is very edtech centric edtech industry and the corporates because youtube is getting unbundled and currently in just in terms of stats 100000 new schools over 20 countries have adopted zoom which has a very generic solution in fact according to anderson horowitz data 37% of the families in us plans to spend 1000 dollars per child on school and after school activities so collaborative note making custom domain plus whiteboarding personalized progress tracker and curriculum plus analytics is something which will be integrating in our platform this is our progress and past recognition so we are glad to say that we are a part of techion cohort where we'll be our target would be to achieve pmf as fast as possible with our north star metric being retention these are the recognition which we had got in the eth global hackfest where we actually the cadbury meet was born these are the user testimonials who have actually used it and we are proud to say that we have just crossed the chasm of 100 users and yeah uh, this is our team uh, i have sushmit is the developer and i am handling the brand and business side we are the two co-founders we have known each other for 6 years and we are pretty pumped to do something good in this very very red ocean market thank you so much there are my college senior as well proud to say that thank you next is jordan from web3 yeah Uh, Jordan, you're on mute. Ah, that would help. Sorry about that. No worries. Okay, let's start over. Hi, everybody. I'm here to talk about Web3 API. Web3 API is a developer tool chain that brings the ease of Web2 to Web3. It enables hyper-composable, multi-platform Web3 applications. There's a problem going largely unnoticed in the Web3 ecosystem, the integration problem. In Web2, applications are lightweight, and all complex logic is executed within central servers. When a user tweets, the app simply makes a request to Twitter's API. This enables apps to integrate dozens of APIs seamlessly. But in Web3, applications handle this complex logic themselves, because central servers have been replaced with peer-to-peer networks and expensive smart contracts. For example, when a user creates a DAO proposal, the app might need to serialize inputs, upload to a distributed storage network, and transact with multiple smart contracts. Web3 apps can utilize JavaScript wrappers to handle these complexities, but this leads to an integration nightmare. JavaScript wrappers lack standardization, bloat applications, and cannot be used in other languages. The integration problem significantly hinders innovation and adoption of Web3, and it's only getting worse as Web3 grows in complexity. Web3 needs to be simple. We can do better. Enter Web3 API a standard that makes integrating Web3 as easy as Web2. Web3 API allows any type of application to execute complex logic on the fly. 
Instead of embedding various JavaScript wrappers, applications just need the Web3 API client. Web3 API powered apps will download lightweight WebAssembly modules from IPFS and execute API requests directly inside the app. Any protocol is just a request away. Web3 API enables many use cases that are yet to be fully realized in Web3. For example, Web3 protocols can now be used in any type of application, such as games or IoT devices. Compose infinite Web3 protocols without bloating the size of the package or requiring central servers. Evolve existing protocols by publishing custom extensions. And lastly, create dynamic in-app experiences, no rebuilds required. We recently finished as finalists and won several prizes at HackFS. Since then, we have been engaging with various projects to understand how Web3 API can solve their problems. The current North Star of the project is the Web3 Hub, a place for anyone to discover, use, and integrate Web3 APIs. Just as Rapid API and Kong have powered the microservice paradigm in Web2, Web3 Hub can catalyze the next leap in Web3 composability. Web3 Hub will enable value-added services such as curation, automation, and application mining. We'll be bootstrapping adoption by partnering and building with the most impactful Web3 APIs first. The Web3 API DAO will seed and steward the project's development by aligning all builders, financial backers, and early adopters. The DAO's design and initial members are being carefully curated, ensuring longevity for Web3 APIs development and adoption. Over the first 12 to 60 months, the DAO will allocate funds to builders working on development, operations, adoption, and legal. In 2021, our goals are to launch the Web3 API standard and toolchain, several high-impact APIs, and the aggregation hub. In addition to the pre-seed builders spearheading Web3 API, the 30-member strong Dorg Developer Collective is committed as an initial building partner. Dorg brings their experience building Web3 SDKs, dApps, and smart contracts for some of Web3's top protocols. They will be the first of many builder communities to execute, uh, execute on the DAO's roadmap. If you're convinced that Web3 API is a necessary leap forward for Web3 and are interested in devoting time or resources, please fill out this form or drop by the table later today. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Jordan. Like one of the biggest and best projects in Apollo. And yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. There's, there's lots of cool stuff here, but I, I really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Jordan. Uh, now we'll move on to Matthew from Memo today. You're on mute, Matthew. Hello. Can you hear me and see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. There you go. Jordan Belfort. Oops. Okay. okay. So welcome to Meme of the Day. So Meme of the Day is a fun social platform for memes stored as NFTs, where users may uniquely share profits by voting on their favorite memes. So a bit of background. Uh, memes are typically images with text that help to rapidly spread new ideas and feelings. They enable deep communication within subcultures, and they encourage adoption of new uh, technology and ideas. So the market for NFTs this year is estimated to have a market cap of $316 million. That's a 50% growth from the prior year. It's growing very quickly. For memes specifically, just in the U.S., people ages 20 to 34, there are 51 million of them who are sharing memes. Um, there's a huge addressable market for this. That's just a small portion. But the challenge is that there is no meme hub that's using Filecoin and Web3 tech. There is user experience friction in Web3, and also casual users cannot currently share in the sales profits of NFTs. So the solution is meme of the day. It's a social and gamified experience where users can upload their memes as NFTs, discover new memes, vote on their favorite memes, comment favorite and share, and they can earn real rewards. Um, not only can they buy and sell their meme NFTs, um, but they can uniquely share in the profits of memes that they have invested a small amount in order to upvote. So whenever those memes are sold, they will get a very small amount of the profit share. There's also uh, a plan to abstract away Web3 components uh, so that there's a smooth user experience. Now, the value is that we're using technology that's borderless, decentralized, and affordable. This gives, would give Filecoin increased visibility. Uh, takes advantage of the speed and cost savings of Matic as a layer two solution. Um, and it would make Web3 user friendly. 
in addition, people can have fun and earn profit. And I, th I think everyone, that's appealing to everybody. Now, our current roadmap, we are completing the Apollo phase, uh, with it, which is the proof of concept. We have a detailed uh, roadmap over the coming months, ultimately culminating with uh, migrations to the Matic and Filecoin mainnets. And our team has the skills, experience, and passion to advance these ecosystems. We have Matt and Anmol on the back end, Shadab on the front end, myself doing project planning, research, and marketing. Uh, so here is a, a demo. Here is the simple meme of the day front end where the user sees memes uh, that have already been uploaded and minted as NFTs. We go to the upload page, select an image file, click upload and mint NFT. It's the Wolf of Wall Street meme. Uh, we confirm this transaction and approve through MetaMask. And uh, immediately it's successful. Here's the IPFS hash. And we can also see the NFT transaction hash. And it has been confirmed successfully uh, in the Matic Mumbai testnet. So it's just a basic proof of concept. Um, we are looking to um, overhaul our design. So we are looking for uh, design help, obviously funding, um, additional front end support and uh, mentorship. Um, and that's it. And thank you for listening and for your time. Thanks a lot, Matthew. Uh, one of the first projects I've heard who is using layer to solution along with Filecoin. So it's pretty interesting. Thanks. Next is uh, Viraj, I guess. Yes, Viraj from Docker Hub. I'm Viraj Anjan and I've worked on a decentralized Docker Hub. Using decentralized uh, Docker Hub, you can easily push and pull Docker images from IPFS and uh, Filecoin. It is powered by PowerGate. It also has support for ENS domain names. By decentralized Docker Hub, images can be deleted from centralized Docker Hub and dependencies can break. In the past, a popular package was deleted from NPM, which broke a lot of dependencies. I also believe that it's a very cost effective solution since it utilizes multi tiered storage, where IPFS is a hot storage layer and Filecoin is a cold storage layer. What have I built? So I've built multiple uh, products for decentralized Docker Hub. One of them is a command line utility using which you can push the entire Docker image to IPFS and Filecoin. For this, you will use the command ddocker push Ubuntu. And then you'll, you can pull the image using the command ddocker pull followed by IPFS CID or ddocker pull ENH domain name. Example, ddocker pull ubuntu.docker.eat. And finally, then you'll create a container. And here is a screenshot where I push the image. For example, ddocker push Ubuntu. And uh, then here I pull the uh, image using this IP, IPFS CID. And later, I pull the image using the ENH domain name, where you can see that this ENH domain name got resolved to this IPFS CID. And then the image was pulled from IPFS and Filecoin. Apart from this, I've also built another product, which is named Decentralized Docker Hub Registry. The good thing about this is that it provides a native Docker integration via custom Docker registry server. It is powered by Textile Hub, Textile Buckets, and Fleek Space Daemon. It also has support for encryption and team sharing. The benefit of this approach is that each layer of the Docker image is pushed separately. Therefore, for example, if you're using a Redis Alpine image and if the Docker registry server already has the Alpine image, then only diff layers will be pushed. And similarly, whenever you're pulling the uh, Docker image layers, only those layers which do not exist in a local machine will be pulled from the decentralized uh, Docker Hub registry. And since this utilizes a native approach for the end user, there is no difference between the Web2 Docker Hub uh, server and uh, sim compared to the uh, Web3 uh, Docker Hub registry. And the first step is that you will uh, tag the image for your local uh, Docker registry server. Then you will push the image to your uh, Docker registry server. And similarly, then you can pull the image uh, from your uh, custom uh, Docker registry server. And if you notice that the steps remain the same as the current centralized solution. And uh, here is the screenshot where first I tag the image for my uh, custom Docker registry server. Then I uh, pull the image from the custom Docker uh, registry server. And here you can see that all the uh, layers are pushed. And finally, then I pull the image uh, from my uh, custom Docker registry server. This concludes the demo for decentralized uh, Docker. Thanks. Thanks, Viraj. Viraj has been 
like a lone ranger he has a full time job but he has been uh, building this and you know how cool it will be if we have a decentralized docker hub there's uh, a lot of uh, collaboration with decompute and uh, other projects in apollo as well so like i'm really looking forward to this project Th- thanks sachin and uh, uh, what i look forward to is you know when the <laughs> people start using it to push th- thousands of docker uh, uh, images daily yes and the- uh, right now the solution is ready actually that is amazing you can please if you want to drop your link of the project so people can just check it out right now sure yeah, yeah. thanks a lot Thank next is alex from into tv hello everyone can you hear me well yes all right let me share my screen right can you see my screen Okay, so uh, thank you everyone for having me. This is Alex from Italy and the team lead of Into TV, a peer-to-peer live streaming platform to design, share, and monetize real-life experiences. Now, on one side, we all strive for experience in a way or the other, but more often than not, uh, we cannot travel or experience right there, right now. So on Into TV, you can design the experience that you would like to live and customize every aspect of it as a a live experience as a NFT ticket. And as you can see here, we're creating a visit to the Baltic Sea type of experience, selecting title, description, labels, and even the budget and the date for it. So it's as customizable as you would do if you're a pizza domino. Now, on the other side, uh, anyone has uh, something to share from their life or their talent or their passions. But in uh, this time of global pandemics, most of events, uh had to be cancelled so um influencers travelers or um, in general artists had to change their plans and had little to no reward for their creative content so on into TV, you can choose to show and be the host of someone else's uh, someone else showing them the world through your own eyes in the second demo, i show you how uh, you can browse amongst the different uh, xp cards for example the one that we created before and match with them as easy as you would do, for example, for a Tinder date, already seeing the date for your availability and the budget that you will be rewarded. Now, uh, we use blockchain to ensure a 100% privacy focused and pseudonymous platform, plus to shift the paradigm from the traditional passive live streaming to an experience on demand with a clear path to profitability for content creators and a 100% undivided attention between host and guest for the duration of the broadcast. For this uh, final demo, I want to show you where the magic happens in the XP cabin. And this is an uh, experience about the Baltic Sea, as you could guess. If you want to see the Baltic Sea, here we are. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, About us, uh, our team has more than 20 years of experience combined. And in less than a month, we've been able to complete our fully functional prototype in Android. Plus, we joined uh, many uh, blockchain competitions and we won most of them. And for our uh, our pre-seed, we just need 40 to 60,000 euros to ensure our complete software development and our product launch in the half of November. Thank you very much for... This was Into TV that lets you see the world through someone's eyes. And this was Alex. I will be waiting for, uh, for you at our table. Thank you very much. Well, the coolest one liner and the best presentation yet. Thanks, Alex. Oh, thank you. <laughs> really appreciate it. And thanks, everyone. And uh, Sachin and Bilek for the hosting. Talk to you later. Thanks. Next is Paul from Hopi Games, who has built Game3.js. Paul, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Sachin, can you see Hi. my screen? Yes. Cool. So I'll start. Whoa. Cool stuff. Cool. Thanks. So, everyone, I'm Paul from uh, OP Games, and I am proud to present uh, for Apollo Game3.js, our project, which is quite simply just an open source Java C game framework, which really plans to be able to bring game more game developers into Web3. 
Um, the reason for this is the, the games industry is an industry like no other. Since I've been in the industry uh, since in 2002, it was uh, a 9.4 billion industry. And fast forward to now, uh, it's, it's grown to $100 billion. And just in the second quarter of 2020 alone, it was $27 billion just in mobile gaming. So despite the pandemic, or maybe because of the pandemic, gaming has really grown. But nonetheless, it's an industry that's very mature. Um, the power, I guess the power uh, players are quite largely the same. Like the top 10 games uh, that are listed here, like uh, Pokemon Go, uh, Monster Strike, Candy Crush. These are the games that have been there for quite a while. And thousands of apps are being developed. So most of the revenues really go to these central, more uh, established players. And what's more, games have actually become uh, very, very based on survival capitalism because the, the players in games are largely the same as the, the ones in Web2. So we kind of see developers not having as many opportunities versus uh, what we had a few years back. Given that, we can see that uh, a mature industry would be very ripe for disruption. And we're calling this combination of games and Web 3.0 as Games 3.0. We can kind of see this coming already with uh, NFTs having a, a record $2 million in transactions uh, just last week. And we can see DeFi growing as well with $12 billion locked. And uh, one thing to note here is these values are locked. These are transactions and not really revenues compared to the, rev to the numbers we see in games. And this is ex exactly what Game3JS wants to do, is we want to be able to unlock that value. If we're able to lower the barrier to entry for game developers, we will be able to bring uh, a Cambrian explosion of innovation from game designers and game developers and really grow the tech, the token ecosystems that currently now are, are very, uh, are, doesn't really have a lot of utility. So we have a demo of game TJS games on play.outplay.games. And we also have our source code open source on GitHub. Just go to bit.ly slash GameTJS. Um, GameTJS is just the first step of many towards the, the whole vision of Games 3.0. We have a, li a list of features already. We, we're built on IPFS for user-generated content and a whole list of other features. But we still need to build easier monetization for ERC20, uh, creating game items on open NFT standards, and, and really providing people with uh, the the technologies that Web3 can provide so we can build a big community of game developers and players. So we believe we're a team that will be able to realize this vision and we have a great set of partners as well. So if you're interested to build this game 3 economy with us, you do reach out and email me and I'll be at the tables later. The project with the biggest potential, like crypto gaming is the, uh, like it's like a niche for crypto and uh, if we have something like a decentralized storage solution for the whole all the games and it will be like amazing exactly yeah that's one of the that's one of the other steps that we also need to do as well yep thanks a lot Paul. well thanks Akin. next is john from astral protocol hi everyone uh my name is john i'm going to share my screen um can everyone see this all good Yep. Cool. All right. We're Astral Protocol. Where you are matters. Location is a fundamental property of our identity. We move around the world, sharing experiences, exploring new places. Location-enabled devices have opened up a new world of location-based information technologies. But smart contracts don't know where you are. Current location-based apps are centralized. Users don't control their data, and companies ex extract value unfairly. It's hard to incentivize users to engage with location-based apps. And blockchains exist in the informational domain. They're difficult to anchor to the real world. To solve these problems, we've developed the Geo NFT. This is a new primitive for Web3. These NFTs serve as proof of human location tokens. With our technology, users mint a universal check-in token which proves they were at a particular place at a particular time. We're developing a mobile dApp that empowers users to securely mint civil proof geo NFTs. Users collect these universal check-in tokens when they visit places, attend events, or complete tasks. 
We believe that the applications of this new Web3 primitive are incredibly far-reaching. We see use cases in retail, labor markets, event production, gaming, governance, health, the list goes on. And the market is potentially huge. Location-based services are expected to be worth $183 billion by 2027. But what if a portion of this could be captured and owned by people? In the centralized web, there are a lot of potential competitors. Foursquare, Google Maps, Uber, Tinder, Facebook, Airbnb, Pokemon Go, so on. But in Web3, we haven't found anything quite like this. We see this as a composable piece of the decentralized web that will fit in nicely with projects like the Foam Protocol, Decentraland, XYO Network, Axie Infinity, Distributed Town, and Hyperware. On tech, we've been working on this for a while. We've designed a geographic decentralized identifier method specification, which gives users control of their spatial data assets. When they register a GeoDID, we use the ERC-1155 standard to mint a GeoNFT, which the owner controls. Data is stored using IPFS, which ensures persistent availability and easy querying. We're designing a mobile dApp to gamify the creation of these universal check-in tokens. Our team has a diverse skill set, including in computer science, crypto economic design, spatial data science and visualization, and game theory. Right now, we're raising $75,000 in pre-seed capital to complete our research, develop our mobile dApp, and launch with our pilot customers. We'll use this money for engineering and R&D and a small amount for marketing. We're aiming for a fair launch of a governance token sometime in 2021. So we're excited to unwrap what this new primitive means for Web3. Follow us at Astral Dow. Donate to our Gitcoin grant. Email us. Introduce us to people who you think will be interested. Rip our idea apart. We are the Astral Protocol. Man, I'm always surprised whenever I hear you, Fred John. <laughs> From Colonel then to Apollo, this amazing progress, amazing team. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Sachin. Uh, next is Garnet from VFM Publishing. Hey, everybody. Let's see if I can get this shared here. How's that looking? Are we on? Uh, not yet. No. Let me know if you need uh, time, uh, Garnet. We can. Uh, oh, I, I think we got it. Awesome. We're on there. Yes. Yeah, good. Excellent. Okay. Today I want to talk about an NFT uh, movie and music publishing platform. Um, part, one of my jobs is to produce films, and this is our project, Key to Christmas. It's coming out this November in the States. Our partner, Vision Films, they've got over 500 movies in their catalog, and they are experts at selling films. So we publish our films on all of the platforms. We're avail you know, aware of the good ones and the ones, you know, the problems that need to be solved. And this is that content creators still need a better solution to market and monetize their creations to protect their digital goods. Consumers need alternatives to the streaming platforms in order to create personalized collections of movies and music with superior UX UI. So our solution is a digital file encrypted and licensed with an NFT token. Uh, the NFT tokens can be bought and sold. They can also be gamified to increase engagement. Um, smart contract affiliate links provide a way to engage marketing partners. Um, when we look at the scope of the NFT marketplace, the first half of 2020, we saw $232 million of trading volume. And there's no other party in the NFT space uh, selling media licenses like we intend to. In the home entertainment section, it's a billion dollar per quarter industry just in the US marketplace alone. The problem is the content creators aren't seeing any of this loot, and we want to change that. Um, that's part of the reason why we're building this platform. So when we look at the viewing interface, we're partnering with Plex, Ambi, other media management platforms to give our community the best 
user interface available. And it's nice that Plex has an existing 20 million users around the world that we want to introduce NFT technology to. So quite simply, the interface is more intuitive than, than, uh, than Amazon Prime or Netflix. We love it. Um, we're happy to say we have um, our first alpha uh, with some limited functionality available on the Rinkby testnet now. You can encrypt your files, mint your NFTs, and create landing pages to sell those NFTs. And the great thing is when your customers go to buy them, they don't have to use Ethereum or Bitcoin or try to figure out a crypto wallet they've never used before. They can pay with a credit card powered by Stripe. Um, thanks for listening to the presentation. We're looking for funding to take us to uh, the next stage in development. Also a talented C++ uh, programmer to help us uh, with some programming on the interface. Look forward to meeting you guys. As I said in the chat, fan power this project from day one. Thanks a lot. Especially the payment solution is amazing. Next is Phil from Heimsheet. Hi. Can you see the screen yet? Uh, loading. Can you see my screen? Oh, not yet. Yes, we can now. Let's start by creating a songbook. And I'll just paste the text in here. And then let's add a lot more songs. Next, I'm going to share this songbook with the device I'm going to use as And a channel is a group of people who see the same content at the same time. And you've guessed it, this is IPFS PubSub. And I wanna share this channel with the people I'm hoping will come and worship with me. So this time I'm gonna use the URL. I'm gonna copy and paste it into an email and send it out to some friends and say, let's go up and worship on Colton Hill. There may be some bystanders who want to join in. So I'm gonna print out a poster as well. And once they scan this, it'll drop them straight into the lyrics. So the idea of hymn sheet is that one phone or a handful of phones can control what a larger number of phones see on their screen, full screen. So this is me grabbing every device I can find and trying to get them to display the same lyrics at the same time. The laptop in the middle is controlling what the other screens see. But it's not just laptops and phones that have browsers you're starting to find browsers embedded in TVs and also in uh, smart projectors. And so this is a cheap battery powered projector and it's got Android inside of it. And that means it's got Chrome. And so it means I can use hymn sheet with that. What makes this especially interesting is that I can run this from a Wi-Fi hotspot on my phone. And so this means I can take this whole setup out on the street for hymn singing in the winter when it's dark in the evenings. Ready? Okay, cool. Sings my soul, my Savior God to be. How great Thou art! How great Thou art! Hey, metanoia. It's a Greek word. Meta means change. Noia means mind. You can think of it like meta, metamorphosis, change. Noia, paranoia, mind. When you put them together, it means to change your mind. And that's the Greek word, repent. And when Jesus came preaching in Nazareth, this was his message. Repent, because the kingdom of heaven is near. So, Hymn Sheet can now sync song lyrics, audio, quotes, PowerPoints exported to PDF. You can even add speaker notes. Subscribe to hymnsheet.substack.io to see these features. Join us on the Hymn Sheet table for a live demo. Give to our grant. Help us add video, image, and iframe support.
Thanks a lot, Phil. I've been sitting here for more than one hour now, but this just made me so smile, you know, just happy. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Next is Amy from Bflow. Uh, you're on mute, Amy. Okay. All right. Hey, guys. My name is Amy Seidman, and I'm one of the founders of Bflow to track, verify, and manage proof of reputation for sustainable business and vet in investment serving as a basis for regulation of reputation-based finance in a $40 trillion marketplace under wealth management. Businesses are clamoring for this money and differentiating themselves with positive sustainability footprints. But meanwhile, not all claims are true and it's time for transparent and accountable data. We're living in a world where we're drowning in our own pollution and we have a lot of issues and we can change all of this around climate change and slavery that we find in all of the areas of our lives. But since the claims aren't true, we need this transparent data. So we're creating what we're calling a mycelium la layer in the global forest of business and investment to enable crowd intelligence and truth around claims by corporations and finance. We align with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, and we believe by connecting these ecosystems for the large companies and investment firms, by enabling this tracking and verification within all aspects of the value chain, that we can be providing a needed mechanism of truth within the world. And this includes the checks and balances systems between academics and NGOs, who often serve as the whistleblowers and the folks tracking it with the business, finance, and investment, and having the frameworks and the, the data creators being our partners, and actually creating a mechanism where data remains in the hands of those who own it. We will have a public opt-in uh, data commons where reputation-based finance can be regulated to reward actors who are doing things that are good and track reputations of those who are doing things that are not so good, like having uh, forced labor in their supply chain. And this is a massive, massive marketplace where they're estimating 39 trillion in glo global GDP every year and about $40 trillion in impact investing under wealth management at this time. So everybody's trying to move their money into what are called ESGs, environmental social governance, but there's very little transparency. And the number of use cases that we've worked under have included apparel, forestry, climate, um, and we have some really terrific uh, partners that we're working with and developing more alliances at this time. We have an amazing team and I'm asking for, my ask is for other team members to join us. We have a, some of the top sustainability experts in the world. We have an incredible CTO with a background in building one of the first payment platforms in the world. Um, and we believe that this will lead into other products that relate to reputation finance, such as climate credits and so on. And we do have a product demo, but of course, I will be inviting people afterwards. Um, we have a Gitcoin grant. We are seeking investment. Um, and I can walk through our existing demo that actually it's an MVP that works completely. And we have a safeguard system that we tied to uh, demonstrate the data commons on IPFS. <laughs> So there we go. That's my presentation. Thank you. Thanks for having me. With your expertise and your team's expertise, we can definitely get to some, you know, mechanism of truth and uh, change the market of 40 trillion, the market of ESGs. Thanks. Next is Nandit from Whitebox. Hey, everyone. I'm just sharing my screen. And then the, uh, yeah, uh, can you see the screen, right? Uh, no. Can you try again? Yeah, it's loading up. Thanks. Yeah, so this is my project bag box. So Bytebox is the interface of the Web3 storage network, which is the Filecoin network. So currently it's me working on the project. So the problem that Bytebox is trying to solve is that right now there is no easy way to transfer data from the current Web2 storage services to the Filecoin network. And for users, there's a complexity to manage storage options for the optimal cost and performance. And there is a lack of similar experience that they get on the Web2 storage services. 
So the solution to that is Bytebox, using which users can automate the transfer of data from the web to storage services to the Filecoin network. They can easily manage how to store and persist their data, and they can get a great interface to view and ma manage their content in an organized way like they do on uh, web to storage services. So this is the glimpse of what our project is. You can see right now there are multiple storage options available like Google Drive, uh, Dropbox, etc. And we want Bytebox to be the intermediary to transfer users from those services to the Filecoin network and provide them better experience once they are on board. So currently this market is booming a lot, but like more than hundreds of millions of users for many of the services. So with our research that we have done from last couple of months, we got that uh, Web2 storage services are quite broken. Like there has been problem with iCloud, Google Drive, etc., with their privacy and control. And so we think that uh, it's time to migrate to the Filecoin network via Bytebox. So the market for the cloud storage ne network for the users uh, is estimated to be $89 billion by 2022. And it's growing by the annual compound growth rate of 23.7%. Uh, the tech stack we have used to build our project is Fleek, Space, Daemon, Node.js. And right now we are using Google Drive API and Dropbox API. So this is how our product currently looks like. You can see the user can manage the bucket and content via our interface. And there's an option to import from Google Drive. So then the user comes and authenticate uh, his account uh, to our app. Then uh, he can select all the photos and the documents that he want to upload to uh, IPFS and Filecoin via Bytebox. Else he can use also Dropbox interface that has already been already been integrated to our interface. And they can easily view content uh, on the Bytebox interface and interact with it. So the future going forward for Bytebox is to be the primary storage, a uh, cloud storage platform for the users. We want them to get good experience so that they can push their data easily from mobile phones and laptop to the Web3 via Bytebox. And hence, we aim to be a better alternate to Dropbox, Google Drive, and iCloud. Another uh, key research area we are working on is CRDTs, which will allow decentralized way of collaborative work like we do on Google Docs, Google Sheets, etc. So that's a very exciting feature that we're already working upon. So thank you. This was all about Bytebox. And uh, do contribute to our grant. And let's talk on our table further. Thanks, man. The CRDT uh, definitely looks interesting. Let's check it out here. Thanks again. Next is, and this is the final presentation. And after that, we will all move into the tables with, and I have dropped the link of the finalist projects. And whoever you want to talk to, interact with, you can go to their table and uh, presenters will be there. Welcome, Senshi. OK, can you hear me? Yes. OK, so let me. OK. So hi, everyone. Uh, we are building a project called Secured Finance. As the name suggests, we provide credit risk-free blockchain-based finance. We use Ethereum smart contracts to manage collateral and automatically handle margin call operations. So users' position is always covered by their collateral. When we look at the traditional banking organization, they typically take the three-layer structure, front office, middle office, and back office. Banks are making transactions over interbank networks, such as SWIFT for currency transfers and Euroclear for security transfers. And there's no central controller, so the interbank network has already been decentralized. So our concept is to replace middle office and back office with smart contracts and deploy interbank system onto the blockchain. As you can imagine, we can achieve exactly the same architecture on top of blockchain using smart contracts. We replace middle and back office in a bank with smart contracts to enable derivative business anywhere. So we build yield curve and automatic margin call system to provide interbank grade peer-to-peer -peer OTC crypto markets such as FX block trades, term loans, cross-currency swaps, and tailor-made derivatives business. Why we made this project? Our mission is to promote token economy by bringing fiat currency into crypto assets market. We believe it is possible by removing barriers between those markets and connecting institutional sized clients. Let's look at the history of financial transactions and its potential market size. 
Finance has nearly 40 years of history. The first cross-currency swap happened between IBM and the World Bank, arranged by Solomon Brothers. We have accumulated knowledge for almost 40 years, so we already have a battle-tested protocol for finance. And if you use the same protocol, all the traditional financial institutions already have internal booking system, and our system can connect them without no system in integration. According to uh, Bank for International Settlement, OTC derivatives, which are peer-to-peer -peer financial transactions, has market size of $600 trillion. We made the interbank market system open to public and aim to gain 1% of market share by removing barriers between fiat and crypto finances. The debt securities market represents a size of low market, and it is $25 trillion of US dollar. I think the audience here is a thoughtful leaders, so I'd like to give you a homework to think about why swap market is much larger than loan market. What's missing in the current DeFi is clear. First and second are stability and liquidity. Those are interconnected. We can't sell 10 million Ether through an exchange because it will crash the market. We solve this issue by providing a large scale peer-to-peer -peer financial platform. Third one is time axis. Because we don't have yield curve, we can't hedge future cash flows. And that's why large corporates are slow. So yield curve is extremely important to hedge future value. And by bringing yield curve, it opens up the capacity for full-scale financial transactions. So what is a full-scale financial transactions? When I say a financial transaction, it simply means a collection of future cash flows. Please remember this shape. I'll go over four examples. Loans are basic form of all complex transactions. You borrow money and you have to pay coupons and return the money at the end. But you probably have to provide collateral to begin. If you flip the side of the loan payment, it becomes a deposit and you may want to request collateral to secure credit risk. Interestingly, if you combine a loan and a deposit, you can make a swap transaction. It is a cross-currency swap. In this case, you don't need to provide or request that much collateral because both cash flows offset. This gives the best efficient use of collateral. That's why swaps are most frequently used format by financial institutions. As an example, bank can provide a structured deposit client. Client deposit US dollar, bank converts to USDC and then do a cross-currency swap to receive Filecoin coupon. Then the Filecoin will be converted to US dollar at the payment. In this way, client can aim higher yields generated by Filecoin loan. So basically, this business is a cash cow in financial uh, in, in banks. So option is even simpler. This, this is just a conditional swap. So for margin call, our contract calculate discount factors and get present value of cash flows. To avoid margin call, borrowers need to keep 150% coverage. If no additional collateral is provided and PV hits below 125%, then a liquidation event is triggered and the collateral will be sold to liquidation provider to cancel the rest of the payments. So in summary, if we can do loans, we can do swaps and others too. So our current focus is Filecoin, Ethereum and USDC loans. So our target user would be miners, investors, hedgers such as banks and arbitragers who make money between markets. So we are making a new market and opportunities. One of the biggest reason is to combat volatility. We have liquidity provider with incentive mechanism to keep bid offer spread very tight and ensure liquidity. Let's see how it works. We incentivize market makers to quote very narrow spread. When a liquidation event is triggered, the best quote provider is chosen to execute automatic liquidation and profits from a better exchange rate by 20%. We would like to invite institutional scale and participants such as Filecoin Foundation, Ethereum Foundation, big Filecoin miners to bring financial stability together. Our system works like an interbank network, and by providing massive scale liquidity, the price volatility on FX broker A on the left side will be greatly reduced because there are always arbitragers who make money from different prices. Our mission is to bring fiat currency into crypto economy by giving more business opportunity to institutions and also by achieving financial stability. Lots of second layer services can connect to the primary layer institutions. 
let's talk about how we built it. Key components are built using smart contracts. So we created these smart contracts and designed the whole banking business operations as finite state machines. Here's a sequence diagram stored in our Git repository. <clears throat> the finite state machines reminds me of, of uh, designing CPU using FPGA board, but now we're designing banking business. So here's our UI components. We don't need to log in. We take market data snapshot periodically and store it to Filecoin network. And lastly, here's pros and cons of our service. We provide zero credit risk transaction because we have yield curve. Clients can control and hedge the future cash flows. Banks can add a new profitable asset class to their business line without introducing new system. Okay, I'm co-founder and CEO, Masa or Senshi. Uh, I like people in IPFS and Filecoin, so I'm a big supporter of Protocol Labs and its community. I introduced the concept of Web3 to the Japanese government and become a trusted Web Task Force member of Cabinet Secretariat of Japan, so I'm sure our society is heading towards Web3 world. Back from Russia is our CEO, who built a P2P Oracle network using LibP2P to achieve cross-chain interoperability. Bhakti from Kyrgyzstan is our CTO, who develops lots of our tools. And thank you very much, and we're looking forward to talking with you. Wow, <laughs> this is like <laughs> the best ending possible. <laughs> You're going to jump on a table, essentially. Thank you very much. Thank you. So much. Amazing. Good Beautiful. stuff. All of the presentations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all of your time. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank, oh, thank you for being here. <laughs> that was awesome. That was so, so awesome. Thank you, everybody. on the, the syllabus um, and, and the only thing I, I guess to say on my side is that um, it, it means a lot that you gave us your trust and what you're doing by building these projects is giving it forward. It is the continuation of kind of building on other open source projects that, that are the, the, the shoulders that we Well, thank you very much, and, and uh, I'm just thrilled at all of the really awesome um, work that everybody's been, been uh, doing. Um, you know, big things have really small beginnings. Uh, I know that uh, for a lot of the hackers here, um, you many things you started recently, and you know, you've gone through a number of weeks uh, hacking on your thing and building it out, and you can see the vision um, of the future, and you can see how this could grow into, into something, but at the same time, it's probably um, you don't know how it's all going to work out, and you're, you're going to face a lot of challenges and and so on along the way. And just really have um, have faith in yourself and have faith in your team uh, and in your communities because uh, you know everything that you build on, everything that has become large now uh, started with a small thing and started with a, with a very small group of people or just one person um, building it out. And so you know uh, persevere through the challenges, lean on your your support network, lean lean on this group of people you built awesome relationships here with this group um, that will, you know, follow you for, for years um, and that really lean on this group to, um, to uh, go through all of those challenges and, and build out your, uh, your systems. And, and, you know, this whole community is, is emerging and growing. Uh, you know, I really, really wish that we could have been together in person uh, for, you know, a moment like this, uh, um, not this year, but uh, perhaps next year or in, in other years in the future, uh, we'll, we'll get a lot of these groups, uh, groups together. 
Um, and yeah, I mean, I think this this moment is uh, really exciting for the for the whole community. For many of us, uh, building at Falcon and getting to the mainnet has been a you know, many many year road. Um, you know, we Falcon had it a very very small beginning, uh, smaller than what you see now. Like what you see now today in a lot of these uh, uh, in a lot of the positions today is way cooler and more awesome than Falcon was uh, that many years ago. So uh, really excited to be here. Really excited to be in the journey with all of you. Um, so thank you very much for for joining us. Awesome. Thanks so much, Juan, for being here. Um, and uh, for everyone, uh, again, for your presentations. Cool. So we're going to do tables. So the way that I think, you know, we have the next 30 minutes-ish to hang out. Um, as mentioned, Sachin put in the link to the Apollo finalists so you can see everyone if you want to take one last look before deciding which table to go to. Um, and I think we'll just break it up into 15-minute slots, if that's okay, just to start conversations, poke in where you want to, maybe uh, schedule some follow-up conversations if you're interested in doing that. Um, the first 15 minutes, we can do the, the, top, the top 10 tables on the year meet, and then the next 15 minutes, we'll do the bottom 10, just to kind of keep it organized. So just uh, once we break in a second here, check out the top 10 tables, we'll bring us back together for the